And welcome back to the HBN Radio Show. That's hbnradioshow.com. I want to welcome all our listeners back. We have our privacy and security expert here this evening. Her name is Leslie Berkeheiser. And as I told you before, Leslie is a principal at Integrity Solutions Group and is also a principal and founder of the Clayton Group. Her specialty and the area which really consumes much of her time is healthcare, privacy, and security. And if you were listening before the break, as I'm sure you all were, Leslie and I were talking about the background of high tech going all the way back to the HIPAA Act, and we were discussing what a breach is under the High Tech Act. And the question I wanted to get into you with now, Leslie, was what are the different levels of breach under the High Tech Act? Yes. So I had mentioned that breach is the inappropriate use or disclosure of protected health information. So that might mean that data has been stolen or seen or accessed by someone inappropriately or lost, etc. It meets that definition and the actual act of it being lost or stolen, etc., is compromising the security or privacy of the protected health information. This means that there is a significant risk of financial, reputational, or some other kind of harm to the individual who owns that PHI. So when you talk about levels, it's almost like there's this uh, triage you need to go through as a healthcare organization if you suspect you have a breach. So the first thing that happens is, is you realize something is inappropriate. Um, inappropriately lost or stolen or seen by the wrong person. Let's just say that I work for a provider's office, and for some reason I have health care information on a USB jump drive, and I stop at Starbucks, and when I go to get my coffee, I put my jump drive down and leave it there. So the first trigger is, uh-oh, something has happened. Now, it's possible that I went back and found it a minute later and nothing happened, but maybe I went back and it's gone. When that occurs and I had PHI on there, I need to figure out what may have happened to it, and I need to think about the uh, compromise of the data on there. So my first question in that example was gonna, would be, well, is that data encrypted? In other words, is it, um, is it protected in such a way that if someone else picked it up, it would be very, very difficult for them to be able to get to that information. If it's electronic and it is encrypted, I do not need to go any further. It really doesn't make that full test of being a true breach, um, according to our breach notification proposed rule as it stands today. Now, take it a step further. If that jump drive was not encrypted and I had no controls on it and there was PHI, and let's say that it's patients' names and diagnosis and social security numbers, well, I could then, going through a process of these levels, um, basically conclude that this is probably compromising the security or privacy of the people who own that data, who's on that jump drive. Because, for example, I mentioned maybe social security number was on there or diagnosis. They could certainly be deemed a significant risk of financial or reputational harm, etc. Now, I've got a couple of other layers. So the first thing is it needs to be something that's wrong or something against policy and procedure with respect to privacy and security. The second is is that there's a harm element. There's a compromised significant risk of financial, reputational, or other harm to the individual. Then there's a third component, and that there are some times that there's an exclusion. In other words, I don't have to continue to treat this as a full breach. Um, Those have to do with the HIPAA privacy rule, and they're very specific in the actual regulation, and you can read through them, and I'll I'll give you a site for it when we complete this discussion today, but the bottom line is is um, if someone is the intent of the person who caused the incident, um, in other words, uh, sometimes there's a person that is allowed to see something, and they're doing it because of their job function, um, and they didn't do anything else with it. That's one of the examples of one of the exclusions. Or sometimes an example given in the preamble of the rule is that if someone were to give information and they were Spanish-speaking only and the information was given to them in English and it was given back, it was inappropriate information, it might meet the definition of an exclusion. What about the situation, Leslie? I know I get this question all the time from folks who work out in the healthcare industry. What if you're faxing something, let's say, to one particular party, 
to one doctor's office, and by mistake, the PHI gets faxed to another doctor's office. In a, and it was just an honest mistake. Would this constitute a bre- breach under the high-tech regulations? It may. And we would have to go through the same triage I'm speaking about. So clearly, we could say it's inappropriate, right? It went to the wrong place. Um, let's say that the data included um, highly sensitive things, such as full name, diagnosis, social security number. So we know that if it went to the wrong place, it potentially... Uh, could compromise, that data could be inappropriately used or, or disclosed by whoever received it. The next step is to go into these exclusions. And in order to for it to actually hit one of the exclusions and therefore you're safe harbored, you'd actually have to have a relationship with that other doctor's office that you accidentally sent it to. Now, you still have the thought that perhaps the other doctor's office is a healthcare covered entity under HIPAA as well. Um, so there might be less risk involved. But technically, if it goes outside your organization inappropriately, you need to treat it as a breach until you can find one of these exclusions and basically pull yourself out of that now, uh, full definition. Now, before we, we hit a break, I had one more question here for you, Leslie. Does the level of the breach, meaning from a low breach to a high breach of the of the security areas here, does that depend upon how many um, uh pieces of PHI were breached, let's say you're involved, it's only one person as opposed to 100 people or 1,000 people. Does that affect the level of breach? Absolutely. And so what we didn't get to talk about yet is what do you do? You certainly have to go through this full analysis, and one of the very components that you have to carefully review is how many people's PHI was affected. If it is 500 or more, you must immediately take certain actions that we're going to talk about next. If it is 499 or other, you may have other actions to take. And we'll get back to that right after we have a commercial break. You're here listening to the HBN Radio Show. That's hbnradioshow.com. I'm Ron Nyman. I'm here with Leslie Berkeheiser, and we'll be back after we hear from our friends over at the Chester Company. Revitalize the image of your practice with marketing and communication services from the Chester Company. We specialize in helping you communicate effectively with your patients. Whether it's a patient handout that announces a new service or a new website where your patients can conveniently make their own appointments, the Chester Company is here to help you present your practice and its services in the best light possible. Let us show you how. Call for a free, no-obligation consultation. 860-526-9903. 860-526-9903. Call now. 